I am the Craft Dad. Welcome back, and for this build, we're doing a fencing sword. So a couple of years ago, I made this fencing sword as a gift for the daughter of uh, my friend. Uh, she wanted what's called the fencing sword, but not in like the fencing that we see in the, where they're, they're the, the pointy needle nose swords. Uh, these are thin swords that are um, very flexible and stuff. And so for this sword, I wanted to make it out of uh, not wood or metal. So I'm actually using a fiberglass uh, pole here. And these are the poles that actually go on the back of your bikes that hold the little flag to, so you can see uh, the person. To make the sword wide, I'm using foam strips on the side and I'm actually gluing it on. This was just one method I was trying uh, using contact cement. Uh, this way, uh, what my idea was is I would glue this on and then I would fill that gap uh, between the foam and the top of the, or the thickness of the, the rod with um, hot glue, uh, thus making it a more smoother transition from the thick middle part of the sword to the thin blade parts uh, on each side. And so this is just me, you know, taking my time and, and gluing it together. And since I'm using uh, hot glue, I'm not worried about the parts where the foam uh, connects or disconnects because those will eventually get covered with hot glue and you won't notice uh, the, the bumps uh, created from the, the, the line in between or the gap in between the foam. So I'm still using the contact cement here and it holds it pretty well. Um, I'm not too worried because I'm going to be encasing all of it in Warbla um, uh, as part of the, uh, the process to, to give it more stiffness. Um, this is just the filler or the inner structure to, um, to make sure that the sword is, is going to be long enough. Um, one of the things here uh, that you'll eventually see is at the end of it, um, trying to figure out the, how to do the tip. Because you, you want it to come together as a tip. Uh, but the transition of the end of the fiberglass pole isn't as smooth. Uh, it was smooth enough, you know, so it was just trying to get the foam to, to glue together. Eventually I filled the gap in between the foam with another piece of foam and then just cut the tip that I want. So what you see here now is, like I said, I'm, I'm filling the gap between uh, the foam and the thickness of the rod because uh, I, I want to have a nice smooth transition. So I figured what I'd do here is just fill it with a bunch of um, hot glue and then I will eventually go back and use the hot glue gun itself to kind of like smooth it out and give it a, a more a, a gent gentler transition uh, from the from the thickness of the pull to the actual foam. Now could you use something else? Of course you can. I just went with hot glue for this project because that's what I felt like using. I could have tried using wood glue, and I do eventually use wood glue to try to smooth it out here and uh, later on. Uh, and so, I mean, it's really just going with what you'd like to try. Uh, so at first, uh, you see here, I was trying to heat up the tool and use that to kind of spread out the wood glue. And eventually what I, what I figured out is it's, it's not heating up enough to, to really melt the glue. So like I said, I use the uh, hot glue gun itself here, just at an angle, I'm using the nozzle. And I'm just kind of smoothing it out, uh, trying to get that uh, nice uh, transition. And if there wasn't enough uh, hot glue, then I just added a little bit more hot glue. And so, you know, just going back and forth, taking your time. Uh, I probably should have done this more so when I first put the hot glue down. That would have made it easier, but, you know, hot glue remelts, so it's, it's not a real big loss. Uh, is there a better way to do this? There probably is, but this is just the way I decided to do it. Um, plus, it gives the uh, it'll give a a, a uh, not a smooth uh, finish in the end because I was looking more like this is supposed to be more of a medieval type build, you know. And so it went with the uh, the it gives a kind of more of a hammered uh, look and stuff to it just because of the unevenness and everything. Um, but again, just you know, taking your time. Using whatever tool you you know, I wouldn't recommend using a heat gun to heat try to heat up, uh, heat it up and then smooth it out because you end up burning the foam uh, during that process and stuff. So just using the heat gun or the glue gun itself worked just fine. You could use a soldering iron. I've used a soldering iron in the past to heat it up and, and melt it, 
The only thing with that is that it may end up getting too hot and you can end up uh, burning rather than just melting. Unless you have a soldering iron that uh, has a controllable heat. So here I'm just trying to give you a visual so you can kind of see down the sword what it looks like. And you can see it's it's got that thickness in the middle and it tapers off to the blade edge. Uh, it's not a completely smooth transition, but like I said, I wasn't going for something completely smooth. Now, I didn't uh, do the video portion where I covered it with Warbla, but that's what the uh, yellow stuff is. It's covered with Warbla. And then here what I'm doing is I'm using wood glue to, to fill in that gap. Um, yeah, just trying different methods. You know, I'm, it's, I'm building this for fun, and so I'm just trying different methods here and using the, the sp uh, spade to... Uh, to, to to get that gap, you know, so I hit the blade edge of the blade and then the middle thickness and then so what you know where there's the gap is that where the wood glue gets to stay. Now I end up doing several layers of this because as the wood glue as the wood glue dries, it does shrink, you know, and so uh, if you're gonna do multiple layers of wood glue, you do need to do some sanding, and so that's what I'm doing here. I'm just doing some uh, sanding so there's texture for the wood glue to, to grab onto. Now, some of you may ask, like, am I using really heavy grit sandpaper? Really, I'm just using what I've got. Um, let's see the photos there. That looks like 60 or 80 grit sandpaper. Um, so it cuts a lot more, cuts faster. Like I said, I'm really just roughing it up, uh, working to, to get uh, what smoothness I can. Now, some of the different layers of the wood glue did start to peel up because I, I was getting too rough with it. Um, and so, you know, it's up to you. How, how much of this process do you want to do? You can do multiple and you can go to a much finer sand. Uh, that's what I did there. I went to a finer sandpaper uh, after doing the rough one to get as much uh, uh, of the high points off. And with the fast forward motion here, it's like super sanding. <laughs> it's kind of cool. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, then I go right back to refilling the gaps with wood glue. Now, as you can see here, there's less wood glue being left behind to fill that gap. Um, and then I, of course, I just pour it on. Oh, this is, I'm doing the other side now. That's why there's a lot more on this side. And I use my finger to help fill it in. Um, yeah, do what you want. Uh, I use my finger, use the tool, use what you want. So now we're over here in the my paint shop or painting area it's just a garage i set up this uh bench here it was nice and red but after all of this you know the it's multiple colors and so i did the uh primer and then i did the uh the gold coating and the spray can as you can see there was really spurts in and stuff so uh, what you see here now is I'm, I'm trying to get it to be really shiny um i didn't follow or do other methods you know for getting high gloss paint um, or the paint to be high gloss. I was trying different methods. Like I said, I wanted to do my own thing and I wanted it to look, uh, not, not like a straight metal and stuff. I wanted different colors and textures in the paint and stuff. So I was just trying all kinds of different things here. Uh, so I was buffing it. I was waxing it. Um, I was just doing all kinds of things. And I know there's people out there that are gonna, gonna criticize and say, you know, I'm stupid or whatever, but Hey, this is my project and I'm doing it the way I want. At least I'm wearing gloves this time. Usually I don't. Um, I was even using the car po liquid polish on here and stuff. I'm just doing a test and see how it goes. Again, I mean, it's your project. Do what you want. Uh, it doesn't have to be exactly um, how others say you have to do it. You can get different effects, different looks. And that's what I did. And so here, just taking the time, buffing it out, and doing more of it. And uh, it wasn't shining the way I, I really wanted it to. I guess there was a kind of shine or sheen that I wanted it to have. And so I wasn't really getting that um, with it. And so you will end up doing here later on is I'll actually end up uh, putting oil into it. Uh, again, just having fun just doing different things you know you don't know what kind of effect you're gonna get unless you actually try it so i mean you, it's up to you what you want to do you can go with the hard wax soft wax you can do the uh the painting and sanding and and repainting and resanding and then doing the multiple layers of clear coat to get that 
that deep shine and stuff but like i was trying to go for something different not like the uh the clear coat uh type of shine that you get um you know and so that's why i was just kind of messing with it and stuff as you can see here i mean i'm just trying all kinds of things you can see how it's blackening the uh the high points of the the blade more and so you got the different contrasting um color tones there uh, so it was it was uh, interesting, and then uh, you'll you'll see how it looks in the end. Uh, I think it came out really nice with the way I did it. Would I do it the same way again? Most likely not. Now I'm try different things, and like the blade I'm doing now is supposed to be a pure black, deep black blade. So that one will probably be a uh, uh, different time of different type of paint to get that that deep black look into it. It's supposed to be a shiny look too. So it's probably just going to be the black paint and the polyurethane and stuff. Uh, and so uh, here I was trying, uh, again, different types of um, silver paint. And uh, eh, you end up seeing how it looks. So what I'm doing here now is now I'm working on the, the, uh, the handle, the, the different pieces of the handle. And so I took a dowel rod and took uh, Warbla and started heating it up and then just started rolling it and shaping it and stuff. Um, adding on more warbler where I wanted pieces to be thicker and stuff, and it was actually kind of fun. Uh, it was interesting to, 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 to do it this way, and then just using the tool and pressing down as I roll it back and forth to really create the gap, because the warbler, as you warm it up, you can push it away from where it's at, and so that's, that's what I was doing. And then, uh, you know, making sure it, it's, it's not too hot and stuff, and so, as you can see here, you know, with the warbler, heat it up, and then once it cools on, it, it sticks really good itself. And so I didn't really do anything more there with sticking it on, and it stuck pretty good itself. Although it wouldn't leave it to that. As you can see real quickly there, I added another piece of warbler to add, you know, to hold that bit on and the part that looks like it's holding the blade. Um, and then I did wood glue, and uh, I had a piece of tube that I bought that the, it would barely fit over the... Uh, the rod and this is to to give it more thickness that way i'm not having to add too much material to make the handle thicker and so here i'm working on another piece but already you can see the sword is looking good and so i used uh some i forget what kind of material it was but it's got a sticky back to it and it's got a soft grip i think it was from a tennis grip that i had bought but then we ended up not using so i repurposed it so i used it on there and then the strip of warbler uh, that i heated up uh, i'm going to use as the the back end I, I don't know what that piece is actually called on the sword but it's like the cap or whatever that goes on the back end uh, and so that way it holds it on there and, and keeps it nice and tight so that way it doesn't unravel And so now what I'm working on here is this is the, the, the fancy metal pieces uh, that, that are going to be on the outside of the sword and stuff. And so this is just trying to get it the right thickness that I wanted and, and trying to do it in a consistent uh, manner. Um, are there other ways I could have done this? Yeah, there are. There are some people that use a uh, pasta roller out there and they'll, they'll make the tube the thickness they want and then they'll pass it through the pasta roller um, and it will get it to the right uh, thickness uh, that they that they want and stuff so I mean it depends on what tools you have what you do have what you don't have here I'm doing it by hand and so it's just uh, heating and reheating and then trying to figure out the exact thickness when you have it then you cut it and the thing that I love about warbler again you can it, it's self-healing uh, when you play with it enough so that line where you cut and, and mend, mended it together, uh, you can actually get that to uh, that line to disappear. And then you won't even really be able to tell where uh, the warbler was spliced at. And so here, I added on a, a screw in the back end of the, um, of the handle. I needed more weight in the handle of it, you know, to the counterweight to the blade, and so I figured I'd just do that with a giant nut and bolt. Really, the only metal piece pieces that's that's actually in the build. 
with there actually no, not being any wood or metal in the blade itself, uh, this is a um, prop that can actually be used uh, or be taken to a convention and stuff because uh, they don't allow you to bring in any uh, weapons that have the, the blades made out of wood or um, metal in, in most places. Um, some will let you do it if it's out of wood, but most, um, from what I understand, they don't uh, want it wood or metal. It's got to be out of uh, other materials. And so here I'm just by hand and just by eyeballing it, creating the different uh, curves that I'm going to need. And as you can see here, um, I needed to add more to uh, one of the pieces and, you know, just heat it up, add it on, rotate it and uh, stick them together and then the, the nice thing is is they'll cool down and uh, keep the, the fairly the same shape. Um, of course I'm not going to keep them stuck together like that I'm just using that to try to keep the same same exact shape. You know and so you can get as creative as you want and you know or as simplistic as you want. You can do this out of foam uh, I did it out of warbler because it's uh, I want it to be a, a, a pretty hard structure once it's done and stuff and so here because I just had barely had them touching each other I could easily peel them apart and these other uh, these are scraps scrap pieces of warbler that I'm heating up from uh, that I had from other projects and stuff to uh, to do the kind of like the welding areas and stuff and so you know it's doing this by hand it's hard to to be precise you know when you build one side and then you go build the other side uh, and so it's but it's fun it's fun to do that and so this is part of the hand guard that I'm starting to build and so I'm getting the warbler to blend in so it looks like it was made from uh, one piece of metal uh, that was kind of like cut down the middle or something Again, however much detail you want to put into it, that's up to you. You know, you could really go into more detail. You could put spirals uh, into the warbler and stuff. I mean, it's it's really what you want to spend time doing. As elaborate or as simple as you want. You know, so creativity is up to you. You know, this is, uh, if you do build something yourself similar to this, you know, by all means, share it. I'd love to see what you build. Hope this does inspire uh, people to build uh, some sorts of different way. Um, I don't like building and then putting a uh, doing the the whole casting and stuff and then just casting copies of the um, the original sword and stuff. I prefer to make everything unique and by hand um, from the get go. Uh, so like so I, if I ever tried to build this again, it will definitely be different, not the same. I didn't. Other than the video and pictures here, I don't have like a how-to and a step-by-step -step guide of what I did. This was kind of just uh, looking at the picture and figuring out what pieces I wanted to build first and then what pieces I wanted to build next. And then that's kind of what I did. I just uh, used that as kind of the guide of, of what I wanted to, to be doing in order to build this. Um, so as you're building something, you know, you're going to end up going through the same thing. You're going to take a look at it and figure out, okay, should... I build this piece first or that piece first, you know, so it's, it's going to be, um, up to you, you know, and so as you can see here, uh, you know, I'm having a little bit of trouble, uh, getting them to match the way I want them to. Uh, so, you know, just constantly checking them against each other, spreading it out, making, you know, could I have done better, you know, with the tools and stuff or again, yeah, I could have, I could have used other tools to help the measurement and stuff, but you know, this is all handcrafted. It is what it is. <laughs> and the, the warbler is great to work with because once it starts cooling down and stuff, I mean, you can see it's it's rigid pretty good and it's holding the shape pretty good. You know, and then you heat it up and get it, you know, the, the additional bend or whatever you want and then let it cool down and it will hold it. And, but you got to be careful because as you bend it and you move things or if you have like tension in something, it it will uh, end up reshaping itself to relieve that the, uh, the tension uh, if you've got something tweaked a little and stuff. So, you know, so I mean, this is all uh, time elapsed here, so this is all going pretty fast. But, uh, you know, this, this, this took a while, you know, and this is, uh, uh, but that's, that's the way it's going to be. It's going to take a while. As you can see there, I, I heated it up and reshaped it a lot more uh, just because it wasn't, 
wasn't really the way I, I wanted it to look. And uh, so I said this was part of the handguard. It is part of the handguard, but this is the uh, part of the sword that goes to the front of the sword, and there it holds on to the ring that I made that kind of that kind of goes around the blade. Uh, it was an interesting. It was an interesting. Uh, I guess the the floor or whatever it's called. Um, it was an interesting uh, piece of it. I know I keep saying interesting and stuff, but. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, instead of doing music and everything in the background, I figured I'd, I'd talk and kind of explain some of the stuff I was doing. Uh, so you can see here why it was important, you know, that they, they mirrored each other as, as much as I could on the two pieces because they're going to be grabbing. And then as you can see here, I'm blending the warbler together where I've connected it. And again, you can heat it up, you know, move the, the warbler back and forth where, where it connects and you'll get the warbler to actually mend and blend in and then you won't be able to tell that there was actually ever a break uh, or a separation in the warble at that location. And so here I'm doing some more shaping. Uh, one of the pieces wasn't uh, uh, bent where I wanted it to, uh, so I was uh, heating it up and getting it to bend more for when I slide the, the one ring back on. And so, you know, on here with the uh, sped up video and stuff, this actually took me about a week to build. And it's just taking your time and looking at what pieces you want to build and then figuring out how are you going to do it. Like I said, there was a wooden dowel rods in the, the one piece, but I could have made it just straight out of warbler. Could have done it with uh, foam wrapped warbler. You know, so it's, it's really what you want to do and stuff. And so here I'm adding this sword guard piece. I don't know what you would call it, but in the picture or the reference picture I had of what uh, what uh, my friend's daughter wanted, uh, it had this little piece extruding from the actual blade itself, um, which you know made it look interesting and stuff. So, so that's what I did. And so you connected it with the warbler, heated it up, you know, and then worked on getting it to uh, adhere uh, as good. Uh, and again, the warbler sticks very well to itself when you heat it back up and then you, you blend it in and mesh it and stuff. So I didn't have to do super glue or wood glue there to, to make sure that it, it held. It was just making sure I heated the warbler up enough and then um, melted it and, and let it cool back off where it uh, actually was connected at. Um, that's, that's what's great about warbler. As you can see there in the picture, I mean, it's, it's holding already pretty good. Uh, it's not moving around. Uh, especially when I was setting it on that that ring around the sword, it um, it's not like uh, getting pushed to one side. It's staying pretty pretty solid in the the center there. And so back to the handle. So remember, I wrapped it and then I ended on more warble at the end there. And so here, what I you can see what I've done. I've added more warble, smoothed it out, and then I did uh, rings of warble uh, around it and uh, just kind of. Uh, with the tool, you know, just did my own kind of like uh, handle design. Uh, what I'm, and then I, I did more uh, warbler and I did the rings and stuff. And so what I'm doing here, uh, referencing the photo and stuff, um, I'm adding in uh, the different intricate rings and stuff that are going to go, I guess, around, around the hand as the actual hand guard and stuff. Uh, so I'm using clamps and I'm using other uh, wooden rods and stuff to try to, to get it to sit uh, the way I want it um, uh, level and balanced and stuff. Because uh, when you heat warbler up, like I said before, it, it, you, it gets flimsy and stuff, so you have to be careful how much you reheat and where you reheat. Uh, and so I set it up and let it cool off to the side. And that's, you know, you take, a, take off for a while and then you come back and take a look at it and and see how it's going and so now the other thing that I wanted to make and you know so that, that was a little quick video there but uh, eventually I'm gonna make the um, the sword sheath and I decided to go with a short sword sheath I didn't want to make a full length one I wanted something that was probably five or six inches long that the sword would actually slide into so now that that one ring is hardened so now I'm gonna start working on um, adding in the other pieces, but I'm also blending now where the warbler actually touches. 
uh, so that it really has a good uh, connection to it. Adding in a little bit of extra pieces on the, the underside and stuff. So again, this is just to help the warbler really uh, stick to itself and hold on to these intricate pieces and stuff. So, I mean, you can spend as much time as you want or as little time as you want doing uh, this type of stuff. Um, but it does, it does pay off in the end to, um, to spend the time doing that. And again, I'm following the picture, you know, so I know the, the ring uh, isn't on both sides of the, um, uh, of the, I guess the two poles or whatever you want to call that. Um, that's the way it was set up and stuff. And so again, I've got more warbler scraps that I heated up and turned into, uh, <laughs> uh, this one's going to be a giant ring. Um, but it's more, more of a kind of like a uh, oval shape, or an op I don't know what you call that. It's a U shape, um, but it's going to be connected at one end. And that piece there that I've made uh, is uh, kind of like the bottom guard, almost like as if it was a trigger. But you know, that's the the bottom part of the the hand. And here I'm trying to figure out a way to <laughs> uh, to to get it to stand up in the right place I want it to while I uh, get the warbler to uh, stick together down at the bottom where it's actually being connected. And that's, you can see me there, I'm heating it up and rubbing it together, um, blending it in, but not blending it too much because again, it's supposed to, you know, it's supposed to be uh, separate, uh, look like it's, you know, two pieces of metal welded together in that, that spot. And so, uh, just doing some minor adjustments, letting it really cool down uh, and then what I'll be doing is uh, figuring out the uh, for the next part. So you see, I already took off the hand guards. It's holding their uh, holding it well there. So now I'm figuring out with the uh, the extra wood to try to get the the right angle and stuff, and to get the um, the war blood to to be even on each side. This is the this is the hard part when you're doing things by hand, um, trying to get the uh, the symmetry and stuff down. Uh, and then also to, to get it to bend at the location you want. Um, and so that's what I was doing there. Uh, and then trying to, and then cutting it. So you can see here, you can do one side and then you've got to do the other side. And you've got to try to mirror it as best you can. Which really makes it kind of hard. But that's what I was trying to do with the, uh, the, the wood rods is to really figure out uh, or get the symmetry going uh, as best I could. Um, it worked out pretty good for me. Um, but again, like you have to be careful in where you where where you warm up the warble and stuff. Uh, if you don't heat, if you overheat in one place, it could end up ruining it uh, or looking funny because it's hard to, I guess, keep it round. Uh, if you've uh, once you've you've got it uh, more warmed up and stuff, so um, you can't re-roll it easily and stuff. And so, uh, as you can see here, I'm just trying to use the wood dowel rods again to kind of adjust it, keep it in place. Here you see just more pictures of the work I did on the handle. Uh, again, it just started off with the simple uh, tube from the small PVC P pipe and just use the warbler. It uh, turned out really nice. Uh, this is just part of the build. Uh, I actually had got more elaborate with it. And then here's how I did it, where I just kept building up the warbler, making it smooth. And then eventually I covered it with just a uh, soft felt ribbon that had a gold um, little, little line at the end of it. And it turned out really nice. And I used the warbler to encase it and keep it in the, uh, it's looking together. Here you see the with all the elaborate rings and everything that I put together, it was pretty hard. Uh, here you can see the case or the, the sleeve for the sword. Again, it's just foam. I used the warbler to actually help keep it in its uh, shape. Uh, I did glue the edge of it, but I felt uh, the edge was so uh, thin it would end up falling apart. The warbler worked nicely. I used googly eyes for the uh, rivets and just did some paint work. Here it is as I took it to the store for shipping. I'm glad they didn't uh, get worried that it was a real sword, although they, they did question it at first until I showed them. And here's the video. Can I open it out? What is it? 
Sorry. From who? From Mr. T. <laughs> now? Yes, now. <gasps> Alex, stop. It's a peanut factory. <laughs> really? You can play with peanuts. Give me the scissors. What scissors? These peanuts? Alex, stop. Look at peanuts. <coughs> Oh my goodness, you filled out the whole peanut. <laughs> oh my god, that had to be expensive. Where did you get all the peanuts? From the peanut store. <laughs> How many layers of bubble wrap is there? That's lots of fun. Hey, cow. Who wants to fight me? You want to die? Yep. It's so cool. What do you have to say? Thank you, Mr. T. Let's go, these peanuts. Anything else? I love you. Hey, she don't even say that she loves me. And you got an I love you? I don't know. <laughs> Bye.